most of us here are using Android every single day. And I'm pretty sure most of you watching this video consider yourself as power users. But trust me when I say that there are some really important power user features in Android many people are not aware of. Well, that's exactly what I'll be talking about today. Hey guys, this is Rupesh from bbomb.com and today I'm going to show you some really advanced features in Android that Power users are going to love. Before we start, let me tell you that this video has been sponsored by Skillshare, which is a great online learning platform for people who want to learn on the go. So say if you want to learn about Android app development, you can take one of these great audio visual classes to really learn all there is about developing Android apps. It's pretty great. There are thousands of classes here in topics like web development, design, animation, film production, writing, graphic design and a lot more. Plus Skillshare is more affordable than most learning platforms out there. With annual subscriptions for its premium plan costing less than $10 a month, rupees 600 a month in India. With Skillshare's premium subscription, you get unlimited access to high quality classes, offline access and a lot more. And there's a really great offer for Bbomb subscribers. Using the link in the description, the first 500 people can get two free months of Skillshare Premium. So what are you waiting for? Check out Skillshare from the link in the description down below. Now let's move on to the best power user features in Android. Android has always had a system UI tuner page with experimental features, but it has always been hidden in different ROMs and it's now hidden even in stock Android. Well, guess what? You can access the system UI tuner through this app, aptly called system UI tuner. Once you've installed the app, you can give it the permissions it needs, including different permissions from ADB, and that's it. Now you can disable various icons from the status bar, set up the immersive mode or demo mode, but there are a couple of things I really like here. First up, I like the fact that I can increase the number of icons that show up in the quick settings in the first swipe, so I can increase it from 5 to 7 to include a couple of more handy options. Secondly, I like the ability to change the two lock screen shortcuts. So instead of the Google Assistant icon here, I can set it to open the Bbom app because I use it all the time and trust me, you should too. So yeah, the app is pretty great. But as I said, the app requires a few permissions through ADB and if you want a guide on that, you can check it out from the link in the description down below. I'm pretty sure you've faced this. So there are times when I've accidentally swiped away all the apps from the recent screen only to realize that I have swiped away a couple of apps that I was actually using. Thus losing my progress in a game or losing a long message I was typing, well, here's a solution for that. So except stock Android, every other Android skin including Oxygen OS, MIUI, Experience UI, EMUI, ColorOS and more feature an option to lock apps in the memory. Basically you can lock apps in the recent screen and make sure there's no way to swipe it away. It's super handy and something I use all the time. Do note that this might increase your RAM usage but with phones now featuring 6 and 8 gigs of RAM, I don't think it should be an issue. A lot of people have been complaining on Reddit that the device's mobile data is turned on even when the device is connected to a Wi-Fi network, thus draining the battery. Well, if you're facing this issue, you can turn this off from the developer options or turn it on if you want your device to switch between mobile data and Wi-Fi seamlessly. In developer options, you can scroll down and in the networking section, you can just enable or disable the mobile data always active option. Some phones have it enabled by default and some have it disabled. So as I said, while this does drain the battery a little faster, it also makes sure that the device switches between cellular and Wi-Fi quickly. So you can toggle it depending on what you really want. If you have an old smartphone or a low-end smartphone that just slowed down over time, it's probably due to intensive apps and the processors running constantly in the background. Well, there's a way to fix this. All you need to do is just head to the developer options on your phone. Here, just scroll down and find the app section, where you'll find the option to set background process limit. You can set the limit to no background processes or at most four processes. I'd suggest you to go with three because generally it's a good idea to have at least two or three processes running in the background. Once you've done this, you should notice smoother performance and better battery life. However, this will limit multitasking, so keep that in mind. So Android Pie brings a new accessibility menu in the navigation bar for impaired people and it's super handy. Let me show you how you can enable it. In the settings, just go to system, here go to accessibility, where you'll find the accessibility menu. You can just enable it and you should see a new human icon in the navigation bar. 
Now you can just use this icon to use a number of key Android features. You can activate Google Assistant, go to recent apps, lock the screen, take a screenshot and do a lot more. I know this is aimed at impaired people, but I think it can be handy for everyone because it brings some of the most important functionalities in a single button. I especially like the ability to take a screenshot with it because I just find it more easy. Turning on mobile hotspot and leaving it turned on even when there's nobody connected to it is something that I always do and that drains my phone's battery away. Well, if you're someone that does that too, there's a way to fix it. In Android settings, just go to Wi-Fi and Internet, then Hotspot and Tethering, and then Wi-Fi Hotspot. Here, just enable the option to turn off Hotspot automatically. Now, this will make sure that the Hotspot automatically turns off after 5 minutes when nobody is connected to it. What a relief, right? Some phones have it enabled by default, but do check it out on your phone. Not all notifications make sense. For example, I want notifications about tags, comments, and etc. from Facebook, but I don't want notifications about Facebook groups or Facebook Marketplace. Similarly, I want notifications from WhatsApp, but don't want notifications about chat history backups every time from WhatsApp. Well, thanks to notification channels in Android, I can make sure that I only get notifications that I really want. I can just go to the apps and notifications page in the settings. Now I can just go to Facebook. Here I can go to notifications and just disable notifications I don't want, like groups or marketplace. Then I can go to WhatsApp's notification settings through the same process and disable notifications for chat backups. Notification channels are available in almost all apps, so you should find it pretty handy. I've always wanted a native clipboard feature in Android and Gboard recently received a brand new clipboard feature which is super handy. You can access Gboard's clipboard by just opening up the keyboard, tapping on the Google icon and then using this icon. As you can see the clipboard here keeps everything I've copied, be it links to share, some text I've copied and more. Plus I like the fact that I can pin things I use often so that I can quickly use it in chats or while ordering something. It's so handy and one of my favorite features in Gboard. Okay, so this is the first thing that I change on every single Android smartphone that I use. Look, Android animations look great, but they also slow down the phones a bit in all their fanciness. Well, in developer options in the drawing section, you can change the animation scale. You can turn it off entirely, but I always go with the 0.5x option, which makes the phone seem faster and does not disable the fancy animations entirely. You can always set it to 10x to see the animations in their full glory. This is so trippy. Using the fingerprint scanner, the iris scanner or the face unlock or the voice recognition to unlock your phone is intuitive, but they aren't really as secure and can be easily bypassed. Well, if there's a time when you really need to secure your phone, you can use the lockdown feature in Android to really lock it down. First, you need to enable it. You can just go to security and lock screen settings. Here, you can go to the lock screen preferences and just enable the show lockdown option. Once done, just press hold the power button where you should see the lockdown option. Now you can just use this to disable any biometric authentication. So you'll have to unlock the phone using the pin, pass or a pattern. Well, there are a lot of other great power user features in Android like screen pinning, Google Assistant routines and a lot more, but the aforementioned ones are our favorite ones. But what do you think? Which Android power user feature you like the most? Tell us in the comment section below. Also, share this video with your friends and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Lastly, subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. Well, that's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.